Hello, everyone. Welcome to the personal statement webinar hosted by the Pre-Dental Association. My name is Navesh. I'm one of the event directors. And today we have Brianna Estevez. She is a D2 student at the University of Toronto, and she has prepared some information covering personal statements. A uh, quick note to the volunteers before we start. I will leave the volunteer form in the chat near the end of the presentation. So make sure you're with us until the end. And without any further ado, Brianna, whenever you're ready. Hi, everyone. My name's Brianna. Very nice to meet you all. And I'll be entering my second year of dental school at the University of Toronto, as Navish mentioned. Today, I will be presenting on seven tips and tricks for writing your personal statement. I know how stressful the application process can be, so I hope this presentation will provide you with a starting point and put your mind at ease. So we'll dive right into the presentation, and at the very end, I will make time for any questions you may have. Okay, so tip one, read the school's instructions carefully. I know this may sound obvious, but it can sometimes be overlooked, especially when you're applying to multiple schools. It can be very tempting to write one personal statement and send it to every school. However, you need to be careful. More than anything, the school wants to evaluate how well you can follow instructions and communicate your answer. The way you deliver your answer is just as important as the answer itself. It demonstrates your communication skills. Make sure you also look to see if the school requested any specific writing style, such as essay format. If not, then of course, choose the writing style that you're most comfortable with. Tip number two, be unique. The truth is getting into dental school can be very difficult. And the reason for this is all the competition. There are tons of applicants that have very similar GPAs, volunteer experience, and even extracurriculars. So you need to take this opportunity to stand out, try not to give a typical answer and think outside the box, brainstorm stories that are unique to you, and also exemplify your personality traits. And this brings me to my next tip, which is demonstrate your traits. Take this opportunity to demonstrate your positive personality traits. In your personal statement, did you mention a story that demonstrates leadership, resiliency, compassion? If so, expand on your traits. Use this opportunity to sell yourself. Tip number four, tie your answer to dentistry. This is where you're going to pull everything together. Why are the traits that you possess important for being a dentist? For example, if you talk about leadership, you can mention that you recognize that dentists are leaders in the community. Being a leader is important so you can advocate for vulnerable communities and so on. I would also recommend including in your conclusion, demonstrate, demonstrating that you understand what a career in dentistry entails. The school wants to know that you know what you're getting yourself into. So that's very important to mention at some point. Also try to mention why you would make a good dentist, or why are you prepared for the challenges that come with dental school? For example, listing um, prior experiences that have prepared you for um, a tough year in dental school, so being committed, um, being hardworking, etc. And tip number five, revise, revise, revise. You're applying to professional school, so you want to demonstrate that you are competent and ready. You want to avoid making spelling and grammar errors at all costs, especially since you have so much time to write and review your statement. It's very easy to overlook our own mistakes, so make sure you ask educated family and friends to look over your work and provide you with constructive criticism. Tip number six. Check the personal statement waiting on the school's website. Some schools actually provide this information, and this can help you gauge how important the personal statement is. This can also help you decide how to prioritize your time if your time is limited. And finally, tip number seven, don't sweat it. I know this is easier said than done, but there is no benefit in stressing yourself out. All you can do is try your best. If this is something you really want, then do not give up. I didn't get accepted the first time I applied and I was very disappointed. It's normal to feel that way. And in the moment you feel like you're not good enough, but that is far from true. Instead, I recognized my weaknesses. I worked harder to improve them. 
The following year, I came back stronger and was very fortunate to have been accepted to both schools I applied to. Moral of the story, don't be discouraged. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Um, before I take any questions, I just wanted to share a resource I'm providing. I recently made an Instagram account to help pre-dent students such as yourself, because I truly know how stressful the process is. Uh, feel free to follow my page at pre-dent underscore help. On my page, you will find advice and tips. Feel free to DM me if you have any questions at all, if you just need some motivation or you just want somebody to talk to. Um, I also offer services such as application review and interview prep. I hope this was helpful. Um, does anyone have any questions? Abdullah, you can go ahead. I'm not sure if you wanna write in the chat or if you wanna unmute yourself. Oh, I'll just unmute myself. Um, I had a couple of questions about the personal statement. Um, you said some schools would like to see um, you tie their answer to just a school or sometimes it might be general too. In the application box and asked us or even the schools, uh, like I guess their portal, it would mention whether it's, it would say, why do you want to come to our school or why do you want to be a dentist? Is that something like what you've seen? Because I haven't been able to log into ASDAS because obviously I'm not applying this cycle and I haven't seen the dental portals this year either because I'm, I'm not applying right now. Okay, great question. So from my experience, um, so I applied to two schools. I applied to U of T and I applied to Western. Um, U of T had that portal and yeah, you only have access at some at one point. I, I can't remember how um, early you get that access, but they did ask very specific questions. So of course you're gonna gear your answer to those answering those questions. Um, whenever the school asks, like this is my recommendation, whenever the school asks more open-ended questions. So for example, for UFT, um, my personal statement question was, um, it was tell me about uh, your greatest, your proudest moment in your life. So I took that question and the tips I share today are the things that I did. So when they asked about my proudest moment of my life, I didn't want to mention something that was an experience that most people to, uh, would have experienced in their life. So I tried to make it unique. So I thought about a personal story to me. And then um, I went on to explain the story and also uh, mention some of the personality I trait, traits that I have that uh, were exemplified in this story or that I demonstrated. And then my concluding paragraph talked about what I learned about dentistry or what I know about dentistry. I tied it to my experience and the traits that I have and why I believe I would make a good dentist. Um, and I also tied it to um, how these traits or these challenges have prepared me for dental school because dental school is challenging it is hard right and so they want to know that you're prepared and you're not going to give up or drop out um so not to say that you have to mention these things these are just things that i recommend that especially if the question is open-ended to kind of slip this in because it just it goes it, you're answering the question you're kind of going above and beyond in answering your question you're not just mentioning your proudest moment you're tying it to dentistry and what you learned and it's just trying to make yourself stand out and go above and beyond in answering that question. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that was good. That was pretty well said. Thank you. No worries. We have so, a couple in the chat. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> no, it's okay. Uh, it's another question. Uh, did you have a lot of extracurriculars when applying to dental school? Okay, great question. So um, you have to research the school you're applying to. So like I said, I applied to U of T and Western. U of T does not care about extracurriculars, to be quite honest. They're just all about grades. Um, of course, it's good to have, especially when you get that interview, when you're at the interview stage, because you want to have things to talk about. Um, Whereas Western really cared about extracurriculars. So um, their whole application required a lot of volunteer experience, extracurriculars, uh, community involvement, leadership roles. 
So when I just, as I mentioned earlier, when I first applied uh, Western, I did not get an interview my first year. And that's because I was lacking uh, those extracurriculars. I had some volunteer experience, but I never really got involved in my school. So if it's not too late, do get involved. It is really helpful. And I'm sure it'll make your school experience more enjoyable. Um, so did I have a lot of extracurriculars? When I first applied, not really. When I applied the second year and I did get in, I did have more so I would say volunteer experience. I didn't have a ton of extracurriculars, um, but again, it all depends on what school you're applying to. You have to research at school. For example, some schools really value research. Uh, some schools really value extracurriculars. And I know Western really values that. And just being well-rounded and having a lot of volunteer experience because those, those moments or those experiences really help you grow as a person. Um, so I honestly, by my second year, I did have a lot of experience, like mostly volunteer, um, but I did get involved a lot. And I also had that whole year to do so. So yeah, I, I would say it's important. For UFT, it wasn't important. So again, like it all depends on the school you're applying to. It didn't really make a difference for UFT. What I was lacking was um, my Casper test didn't go well. My typing skills were not great. I'm very old school and I like to write with pen and paper. And so my typing speed was like, 15 words per minute. And I'm not sure if you guys know the average, but that's very bad. <laughs> um, so I didn't get to finish that test on time. And I know that's what hurt me. Um, but again, all depends on what school you're applying to. Did that answer your question, Christy? I think that was solid. Awesome. Thank you. Mohammed is asking, can this session be added to my extracurriculars? Um, technically, yes. If you are a volunteer with the Breed Dental Association, uh, you can get hours from this. So, you know, make sure you, you're doing that. But yes, these sessions can be added to your extracurriculars. Janani is asking, how did you know what aspects to improve when you didn't get in the first time? Awesome question. So obviously, as I mentioned, different schools want different things. So I had to see where I was lacking on their list of things or what they really value and prioritize uh, when they're making or when they're evaluating my application. So for UFT, as I mentioned, it was the Casper. Uh, when I finished the Casper, I knew I was like, oh my goodness, I did terrible. I missed almost every question because you kind of get kicked out after every five minutes. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Casper test, um, but I knew I barely answered any questions because I was typing so slow so I knew I didn't do well but after the test I thought like okay my GPA is super strong I still think I had a chance and when I did get rejected I was very disappointed and this is what I did and this is what you can do I actually emailed UFT the admissions office and I asked them I said I was very disappointed to hear that I didn't get accepted and I was just wondering um, where I could have improved on in my application so that I have a better chance next year and I'm not sure if every school will, will reply, but I was very fortunate. U of T did reply to me and, and they said, honestly, your Casper was below average and that was the issue. And if you work on that next year, you have a much better chance of getting in. Um, whereas Western, I didn't reach out to Western because in my heart, U of T was always my top choice, but Western, I kind of just figured out myself because when I did um, apply, I realized I didn't have a lot of solid answers or solid experiences to fill in those boxes and to answer their questions, such as volunteer experience. I only had like two extracurriculars. I had like maybe one research. I didn't have any at all. Um, so I just knew Western where I was lacking. Did that answer your question? I would definitely recommend if you don't get in, emailing the schools and asking if they can provide information where you can improve. Yeah, no worries. Um, another question. Uh, for some reason, I cannot find the pre-dental help. Anyone else have the same problem? Um, it's an Instagram page. Yes, it is an Instagram page. Um, if you like, yeah, it's pre-dent underscore help. I, you can search it if you follow... Um, if you follow the pre-dent association... I am following them and I believe they are following me back. Do you want to try maybe searching me in their following or followers? And let me know if you can find me. If not, um, you can send me personally your Instagram and I can follow you from that account. 
So I'll go ahead and maybe answer the next question. But in the meantime, maybe try. Mm -hmm. It is in the I, followers. I, sorry, I unmuted myself without um, raising my hand. That was me. I found it. So sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. And because of that, I couldn't find it. I'm good now. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm glad you found it. OK, so let's see the next question here. Um, mm -hmm. OK. So compared to GPA and scores, which is more important and also what GPA has the best chance? Okay. Um, so what do you mean by compared to GPA and scores? Do you mean like that scores and GPA? Yeah, so that was me. Um, thank you for answering the question. So yes, I mean like your school GPA compared to like DAT scores or um, whichever like um, Canadian dental exam scores, um, which one is more important? Because I know obviously different schools are different, but I just want to kind of like get like the gist of it and as well as like what certain average of GPA considers to be having a better chance just in case if a score does not look like better than more of an average that's a great question um so again it it's unfortunate but it's very specific to the school so you just have to do a lot of research what i would recommend is go on the school's website and search admission statistics and that will lead you to information such as um, it'll show you every year of the averages of students that were admitted and it'll show you the average gpa it'll show you the average dat scores It'll show you, um, it might show you some other information. It, it does, I think it even breaks it down to show you sometimes the average um, like PAT score on the DAT, the average um, academic score. It might even break it down further. And you can see, okay, so the average um, PAT score, for example, was a 20. So you know you're safe if you have a 20, maybe even a 19. And of course, if you're above 20, you're, you know, you're in a good place. Um, I would also look at the average GPA. The average GPA will tell you more or less like how good of a chance you have getting into that specific school. So it's it would be called admission statistics. So look for that. Um, and I would also recommend if the school reveals how things are weighted, you can even email them and say like, how is the GPA weighted in comparison to the DAT scores? And they might say, okay, we take into account your GPA is 50%. It's weighted 50%. So you know, okay, that's a big chunk. I want to make sure that my GPA is around the average of last year's admission statistics. Did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. No worries. Um, another question. <clears throat> What type of things did you do to show the school you were a better applicant during your second round of application? Awesome question. So um, that was me basically improving on my weaknesses. So I took a year off. In that year, I learned how to type <laughs> um, because I, I knew I was really lacking on the Casper and I really wanted UFT. And um, they unfortunately added the Casper that year, the same year I applied. So I knew to be able to do well on that Casper test, I had to improve my typing skills. I also even, um, did practice. So I would look at an ethical question. I would tie myself, answer it quickly. So just being prepared in that sense, um, for UFT, sorry, not for UFT, for Western, I knew I was lacking on volunteer experience. And I also wanted to increase the number of hours I was shadowing. So. I took that year, I was working at a dental office as a receptionist. Um, I recommend applying to dental offices for work if you take a year off. Honestly, that dentist is like a mentor to me. He still is. We still keep in contact. He always teaches me things. He sends me cases. And it's even just a network. He wants me to work for him when I'm done school. So just setting yourself up that way, that's a huge help. Um, and some schools require references. You can even use a dentist as a reference. Of course, that's going to look really great on your application. Um, yeah, and just volunteering. I wanted to volunteer um, in a healthcare setting. So I was volunteering at a hospital. I was also volunteering during COVID. My gap year was during COVID. So I was uh, with an organization that was supposed to connect um, seniors to youth and to help them learn how to use um 
various uh, ways to communicate online. So like Facebook, WhatsApp, um, any form of communication so they don't feel isolated during COVID. Uh, so that's how I got involved and kept myself busy. I also um, learned how to sew, sewing masks uh, for COVID at the time in the very beginning when um, masks were obviously not as accessible. So I, I sewed masks to help, um, I guess, with donations for uh, shelters, hospitals, um, and other locations um, but basically just getting as involved as you can if you have that year make the most out of that year get as much of volunteer experience as you can and it's not even just putting that volunteer experience on your application it really does help with the interviews because then when you get questions you have so many experiences that you can refer back to to help you answer that question and it just makes you that much stronger as a candidate as a whole and on top of that there's so many benefits to volunteering you do grow as a person you learn so much about yourself you learn so much from others um, so yeah to better my application I just I took the year to just better myself essentially and then just work on the things that I knew were my weaknesses did that help answer your question I hope that answered I think that was good <laughs> awesome thank you Reem has a question um, are there additional questions in the application portal for UFT and UWO that are not included in the personal statements slash essays slash autobiographical sketch? Okay, great question. So um, at least the year I applied, I'm not sure if it has changed, um, but a year ago, UFT, uh, there wasn't really a portal with questions. It was more so uh, you answer your personal statement. And then I think they had one more question. I, I'm pretty sure I wrote like two essays for U of T. And then you honestly just email it over to them. U of T's process was like very smooth. And um, I think the actual application portal that you open is just like general questions. It's not anything specific, like your name um, and maybe some information like where you live. And just, it's honestly just an application. It's no questions, no, um, yeah, no, basically no questions that you you have to prepare or answer for. It's just questions about yourself. Um, for Western, the whole autobiographical sketch, um, that one was a bit more intense. There, it's, it's a lot of questions. So that would probably take you a lot longer. And within that whole um, portal, I believe you also include your personal statement. The Western application is definitely a lot more intense, but U of T, it's mostly just those, those two big questions that you have to answer and then email over. I hope that was clear. Solid. Awesome. Um, let's see, Another sorry. question, sorry. Yeah, thank you. It's helpful when you read it, I get lost. <laughs> yeah, I got this, I got this. <laughs> Okay, so M is asking, do you recommend volunteering long term with one organization or shorter amount of time with multiple organizations? That's a really good question. Um, I would say like it depends on the school you're applying to. So um, for example, if you were to apply to U of T, I would recommend just choosing one and being long term because they. It, it's also good to be long term. It shows that you're committed. Um, for Western, I feel like they really value having like diverse experiences. And, um, I don't, uh, from what I remember, I don't know if they, I don't think they make you mention the start and end date. I think they ask you the total hours in total. And I don't know, I would, I would think for Western, it'd be more beneficial to have more experiences listed because they really want you to be well-rounded and, I think they value diversity, um, whereas U of T didn't, didn't matter so much. I think it would be maybe beneficial and honestly less stressful to just stay committed to one organization. Um, but really, it all depends on the school you're, you apply to. So if you really have your heart set on one school, I would research that school and then try to find students that attend that school and talk to them about it too. That could be helpful. Mm -hmm. And to be safe, um, it's good to stay in a solid organization for a long time. Uh, it does show your commitment, but it's also good to branch out and get some experience in a lot of places. So 
it's safe to do both of them. Yeah, of course. If you can do both, that's even better. <laughs> like if you can stay committed to one and then also have your experiences elsewhere, that's obviously ideal. But yeah, if you have to choose one, I guess depends on the school. Yeah, it's tough to say. Uh, Parmita is asking, do all people who get in UFT have a 3.8 to 3.9 GPA? Um, that's a great question. Unfortunately, I feel like every year it just gets more and more competitive. Um, your best bet to see where you stand and how good of a chance you have would be to look at last year's admission statistics, look at the average of the applicants that got in. And if you were anywhere near that, you probably have a solid chance of getting in. Um, so yeah, I would look at, I would look at that. Um, I don't know the specifics. I know U of T is all about GPA and GPA is like super important to U of T. Like, I'm not going to lie to you about that. Um, if your U of, if your GP is not, GPA is not the strongest, I know Western doesn't care so much about GPA anymore. They really value being well-rounded. So that's always an option. And that's another school in Ontario. Um, but yeah, I, I can't really answer that question. I know it has to be very high. My GPA was very high. Um, and if you're around the last year's admission statistic, I can try to look into that now, or I can answer that question at the end of this presentation and just quickly check last year's admission statistics if that helps. But if you can just quickly pull that up, um, that'll give you an idea of how much of a chance you have of getting into U of T. I hope that helps. Man is asking, how do we volunteer with the Pre-Dental Association? A uh, common question. It is in the link in our Instagram bio, the volunteer registry. So just sign up, it's a Google form. You'll get an email, um, pretty simple. It's in the Instagram bio. Ja is asking, did you have to go back to school to improve your grades? I was very fortunate I didn't. Um, I would say the strongest part about my application was probably my GPA. Um, I was lacking in like my typing skills for the Casper, like I said, and volunteer experience because I was so focused on like GPA, GPA, GPA. Um, I didn't get as involved with the school as I should have, and I didn't volunteer as much as I could have. Um, but again, like, I don't want that to discourage you. Everybody has their strengths. Everybody has their weaknesses. Um, I know people at U of T who had really bad GPAs and they, and they stayed longer to improve their GPA because unfortunately that's something that's very important to U of T. Um, so personally, I didn't have to, but there are people who have, and it got them far, even getting, um, your master's is another option. If you do your master's, I know that gives you extra points at U of T. So you kind of have an upper hand. So that's another option. Um, but I would definitely maybe try to reach out to somebody who is at U of T in that situation. I can try to, um, maybe connect you with somebody so that you can talk to them about talk to them and they can share their experience with you, if that helps. Rena's asking, compared to GPA and scores, which is more important, also what GPA has the best chance? So I'm gonna answer this one. GPA and scores are both very important to most schools. U of T is a little bit more strict on their GPA and their DAT scores. So the higher, the better chance. Uh, schools like Western, they take more of a holistic approach. So a well-rounded application can get you really far. Uh, but all in all, you want your whole application to be well-rounded. You want to have, you know, the best scores you can do, the best GPA and a decent um, extracurricular portfolio. Ja is asking what type of research is needed? Okay, great question. Um, personally, I never got into research and I was lucky I didn't have to. Um, I just, because I had that year off, I didn't really want to be back on campus. I wanted to devote my time to volunteer. Um, the type of research really doesn't matter. If I know people who have done research in like very like 
irrelevant areas. So it doesn't matter. It's just the experience of having research. A lot of schools value that, especially Western. And I know U of T values that too. So if that's something that you can mention in your interview or your personal statement, that would definitely stand out. Um, but again, yeah, the type doesn't really matter. If, Of course, if you want to um, find something relevant to dentistry, that's that's a benefit. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't, I don't think it matters that much. It's just more the experience itself, because then the school wants you to get involved with their own research, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Arij is asking, are there any resources that you recommend to study for the CASPER test? So there's a lot of paid resources out there, uh, a lot of solid ones. The Pre-Dental Association has a lot of resources for free uh, about the CASPER DAT um, courses individually. Uh, it's all in our Discord. It's in, you can find the Discord in the Instagram bio. I'm going to refer to that a lot. The Instagram bio has everything. You can find the Discord and the Discord has a lot of free uh, resources for the Casper uh, specifically. Yeah, I would try, like there definitely are free resources and I would try to, you don't want to spend more money. Like it's already very expensive. Um, there was a resource I know I used just to give me peace of mind because it gave you uh, like it was like a simulation practice. I'm trying to find what resource that was and it was very affordable. Um, I'm just checking here. Okay, so I believe it was called apetest.com. But before you do this, I think you have access to a bunch of tests like practice tests and this really prepared me especially with timing and it really puts you on the spot asking ethical questions what i would recommend is use um use the pre-dental association questions and practice first use the free as many free resources as you can first and then if you feel like you need that extra help i would recommend this site and i can paste it in the chat um, it wasn't too expensive. It was very affordable and I found it very helpful personally. And I know one piece of advice, um, the package I went with, they don't send you your test after. You kind of just write it and you can't go back and reflect on what you could have improved on. So what I did like as a little cheat is I took screenshots when I was done writing my answer. So that's just a little tip. <laughs> no worries. Mohammed, can we still be a part of the Pre-Dental Association even though we live in the USA? Absolutely. Just um, it's open for anyone. Just register. We'll get into contact with you and we can get working with you. Rena, would it have to be dental related research? So it, it doesn't have to be. If it is dental related, obviously that looks good. Um, but if you can't get dental related, I would definitely get anything because again, they just, they want students to have those research schools because they, the school wants you to eventually participate in their own research, um, once you're a student. So it doesn't really matter. Um, if you can get it, that's great. If you can't, it's really not the end of the world. Jaws asking, how do you stay positive when your GPA is not where you want it to be? Yeah, so... I, I know how discouraging it can be, especially we tend to compare ourselves to others and it, it's not easy. And I know that because things are so competitive, it's, it's stressful because you know that your grades aren't where they need to be. So you just have to accept it. And again, like you can look into other options such as applying to a school like Western that's more well-rounded if that's something that you're open to. Um, there's also opportunities to improve your GPA. I believe, uh, what school is it? I believe U of T and other schools will look at like your three last years or some schools look at your three best years. So it all depends on the school again. Um, yeah, I just honestly, at the end of the day, what's most important is don't give up. Look, everyone has their weaknesses. Your weakness may be GPA and that's OK. Accept it and then just improve it. So if that means taking extra courses in the summer, if the school um, will accept those summer courses, if that means taking an extra year, like you have to do what you want to do. If this is something you really want and then just look into other options, such as other schools that don't value uh, GPA as much, such as Western. That would be my advice. Mm -hmm. So if your GPA isn't where you would like it to be, 
you can always go back, uh, retake the courses, try to do better. But if you, you could also work on other parts of your application, like your volunteering, your extracurriculars, um, your relations with dental professionals, uh, these can all help your application as a whole. So it's not the end of the world if your GPA isn't where you want it to be. Of course, there's a many options for you to go to if you can't get into your one desired school. There are other options. Um, if you're in Canada, you know, there's schools here, there's schools in the US, Ireland, Australia, there's a lot of places. So don't be discouraged, just stay positive. And uh, there's many ways you can uplift your application. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, Jet Lee is asking, how many dental schools did you apply in Canada? Uh, me personally, I applied to three. I applied to U of T, I applied to Western, and I applied to McGill. Um, McGill wants you to speak French, and I cannot speak French for the life of me. They really value that. Unfortunately, unfortunately I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but every province in Canada, they hold seats for their own people. And then there's like maybe three or four seats, sometimes five for people out of province. So it's a bit more challenging uh, to apply to places like Saskatchewan, British Columbia, because there's less seats. And at that point, I, I, like the whole world is competing uh, for those out of province seats. Um, U of T and Western, which are the two schools in Ontario are unfortunately the only two schools that don't hold seats for in-province students. Um, so basically you have those 50 seats and the whole world is um, fighting for them. Um, but again, like not everyone's gonna be applying to these schools. It is a bit more challenging. So if you do live in Ontario, such as me, <laughs> it's a little tougher. Um, but again, if you're persistent, hardworking, uh, and you're open to applying to different schools and maybe moving away, like you will get to where you want to be. Uh, Rachel's asking, does UFT look at way slash certain DHT sections more than others? I believe so. Um, what was it? I believe UFT didn't care too much about, if I'm correct, um, the reading comp section. And I was glad about that because that was my lowest score. Um, whereas Western, I think Western cared about that a lot. Um, so again, if you're really set on one school, research a lot about that school because then you know, okay, uh, I believe U of T really looked at the overall academic average and the science sections and the PAT as well, but I don't think they really cared about the reading comp. So um, again, different schools value different things. So just do your research, especially if your heart is set on one school. I hope that helped. Uh, Grace asked me, how can I find out what the average DAT score was for the last round of students accepted to U of T? Do you have any idea of the average DAT scores of U of T applicants? So <clears throat> the last round, the DAT scores can be available on their website with their statistics. Um, check that out. If you can't find it, something I recommend to all my colleagues, if you're looking for some personal uh, research information about the schools, you can always call in the um, application office when they're open and you can ask them their question. They get many questions from pre-dental students like us about a lot of stuff, so they'll be happy to help. So always don't be afraid to call in and ask. Yeah, and to add to that, um... What I found, yeah, you definitely Google like admission statistics, you will find everything there. And if you don't definitely email the school or call them. What I found, at least when I was uh, writing or preparing for the dad, I felt a safe score was a 20. And so I just kind of aimed, of course, like I wanted to get above 20, but I, I wanted 20 to be like my lowest. I feel like that's a pretty safe score. And if you're aiming for that, and you get above that, obviously that's great. If you get just below that, that's okay too. But I feel like a 20, 19, 
20 is definitely better, but 20 is like a safe score on the lower end. I got a 19 in one section and that's okay too. Most of my sections were like a 20, 21, 22. I didn't get crazy amazing scores, um, but I would say 20 is what you want to have as like either your average or try to be around your minimum score. You don't need crazy scores like 26, 27. Like that of course is great if you can achieve that, but that's not necessary. No problem. Ethnin's asking, is the GPA requirement different if you did undergrad from U of T? I believe it's all the same. U of T treats everybody the same. Um, yeah, I, from what I know, it's all the same. That's a question you can double check and maybe email the admissions office, but I'm almost certain it's all the same. No worries. Mohammed is asking, what is a CASPER test? Or is that only in Canada? I never heard of it. It's like the DT. So the okay. CASPER, um, it's like a judgment test. It's situational. It tests your ethics. It's really quick too. We have a whole presentation about um, how to be successful in the CASPER. It's recorded and uploaded on the YouTube. So if you want to catch up on the information about the CASPER, definitely check out that video. Um, but yeah, it is some, I don't think U of T is asking for CASPER this year, but it is in Canada. So you would, if you're applying in Canada, definitely t t t check it out. To add to that, it's also very uh, common for medical school applications now. It's just like an ethics test. They want to make sure that you're ethical. Yeah. And they time you so you react quickly because they want to know your first instinct. They don't want mm -hmm. it to be planned. So make sure you type quickly. <laughs> yeah. And also like they don't they don't check for spelling errors or anything. It is super fast. So um, they just want to like get at your ethics basically is what that test is about. Exactly. I, I see here, don't be a psychopath. They just also want to know that you know yeah. how to handle situations and that you're compassionate um, and that you have good like judgment. <laughs> what was your backup plan if you hadn't gotten into dental school in your gap year? Great question. So I'm the type of person, everybody's different. I'm the type of person where I believe if you truly want something, uh, you will make it happen. I remember when I first didn't get accepted, I was devastated because somebody actually asked me that question, like, what's your backup plan? And I was just thinking in my head, I don't really have one. Like my plan is to try again. And of course I, I get, it gets to a point, I get it, it gets to a point where like, you can only try so many times and then you have to go on with your life, but you have to explore all your options. So my personal backup plan was if I didn't get accepted to UFT, I wanted to apply to Australia. There, um, requirements were a lot less intense and so when I saw their admission statistics I saw that I was like way above that so I felt that I had a good chance of course I didn't want to go to the other side of the world um, but that was something I was willing to do to be able to get into dental school so again like if you're willing to make sacrifices if you're willing to work harder be persistent and patient I truly believe you can get there um, but again that depends on the personality you have and how much you're willing to sacrifice, I guess. Muhammad is asking, I was wondering what was your undergrad major? My undergrad major was psychology. I started off as in integrated science. I had a fear of blood. I had a phobia, so I changed to psych. I was very passionate about mental health. And then I realized I missed my science courses, but I didn't bother to go back because I was just so far into it and I didn't want to delay my graduation. But I did make sure it doesn't matter what your major is. It just matters you have the prereqs. So make sure you go to your school websites. There's a lot of prereq, prereq courses you need, such as like, I don't know, a lot of schools want chemistry. A lot of schools want organic chemistry. Uh, human fizz. So as long as you're getting those prereqs, your major doesn't really matter. And what I would recommend actually, which a lot of people don't think of, choose an easy major so you can make sure your GPA is high. And then of course, you're still going to have those hard courses, which are your prereqs. Um, but make yourself make your life easier if you can. Ethnin's asking, 
Also, I'm really struggling to find a dentist to shadow. Every office I call, they are saying they can't do the COVID. I have been trying since last year, but been getting the same reply. Great question. Um, Sorry, yeah. you want to speak this? I can answer this real quick. I can personally relate to you, Ethnan. Um, before COVID, I used to go in uh, to multiple dental offices with my resume and give it in, and they wouldn't give me a chance. So what it really is, is you just have to be determined. You have to go around town, uh, really find someone, find a connection, and hope that they take you in. If you're struggling, the Prudential Association helps people like this. Uh, we work with a lot of offices, a lot of doctors, and we create shadowing opportunities where you can meet uh, the dental professionals in person. So if you would like to take part in that, definitely check that out on our Instagram page. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And just to add to that, I noticed that the Pre-Dental Association offers online shadowing. That's what it appeared to look like. So that I feel like still counts as shadowing and you can add those to your hours, I believe. So correct me if I'm wrong. And um, have you tried, Ithnan, contacting your own dentist? Because I feel like if you're the patient, they're more obligated to let you shadow. That's where I started. Um, yeah, have you tried asking your own dentist? Hey, hey, yes, yeah. So my dentist, so he's not the owner of it. So he, he's like, you know, ask the owner and then the owner said no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but honestly, if you're trying to call, I would try going in person. And um, sometimes people like it's harder to say no to somebody uh, in person rather than over the phone. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, go into the office and say, do you mind um, if I speak to the dentist? I want to inquire about shadowing. And if the uh -huh. dentist has a minute, yeah, you can ask them. And so do you recommend like I take a resume with me or something? You can if you want to show that you're like responsible and the, and you want them to know about you. I don't think it's really necessary, but if you if you want to, sure, maybe some dentists would appreciate that so that they can learn about you and who you are. But I would just basically kindly ask them if they wouldn't mind and this is a career you're really interested in and you'd like to learn more about it and if if they wouldn't mind if you shadowed for a bit at their office. And honestly, I feel that the dentists that are super passionate about their job want mm -hmm. people to shadow mm -hmm. because they they want to teach you. So yeah, got, it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. No Thank worries. you so much. Yeah. So like a lot of dentists, uh, dental professionals are actually really nice when you meet them in person. They're really helpful. So if you just put your best foot forward and you show them that you're really interested in the field and you're really passionate and you want to be a learner, a lot mm -hmm. of them will take you under their wing. So my best advice is to just go in person, you know, dress up a little bit, dress clean. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, best foot forward. Yes, yeah, you know, and, 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 you know, I'm hopeful, like, you know, things are opening up, so, you know, I can just, mm -hmm. now I would be allowed to walk in, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, before that, you couldn't even walk in, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. definitely bring a mask, though. Uh, you yes. You need a mask, so. Uh -huh. All right, thank you, thank you. No worries. Actually, sorry, I just want to add one more thing. Um, I know now that because of COVID, because once in a while, I'll actually assist the dentist I used to work for, and anybody in the observatory room needs to be suited up so it's a requirement now to have the gown to have the the n95 mask and the face shield so maybe the dentists are not willing uh to let you shadow because they don't want to provide you with those things because they're expensive so you can always even like throw in like i'm willing to bring my own ppe i'm not sure if that'll help um but yeah that's just a suggestion that came to mind thank you yeah appreciate it no worries uh, Sarah is asking, how can we become a volunteer for the Prudential Association? I visited a link in your Instagram. Take me straight to WhatsApp group chat. There's only admins. Is there a form we can fill out? Okay, there should be a form. I'm not 100% sure about the, um, the process, but there should be a Google form. If you can't find it, you can DM the Instagram and we can get into contact there and help you individually. Abdullah, you've had your hand raised for a while now. If you, I can unmute you if you can't unmute yourself. Yeah, I got it. Thank you so much, man. Um, no I think I had a question about the uh, 
like the application cycle for UFT specifically. Um, so in like the interviews, I don't, I don't know if like if you signed like NDAs or like if you can tell us some stuff about it. But was your interview an open style interview, a mixed, um, like multiple session interview, or was it one with a group of people who were there? So mine, they changed it to last minute. I believe they changed it to like a standard interview format so for me it was online because of covid and i had mm -hmm. two interviewers and they asked me i was very fortunate they asked me very like typical um interview questions i did i didn't have like any curveballs really um okay. yeah so for uft it was it, it wasn't too bad and honestly the interview i was so stressed for it at the end of the day, they just want to see that like you're a human, you have feelings, you're kind, and they just honestly want to get to know you. So looking back, like there's really no reason to be nervous. Um, they just want to make sure you have like good judgment and you have good experience and that you're prepared for to like start a journey in dental school. It, it was really not that bad at all. Okay. Okay. So it was just one person in the room or was it a group of people like an up or down student, a faculty member? Uh, like the dean or something like that like, I had, I had, yeah I had two interviewers and they were actually um staff at U of T they, they were dentists and professors um but I just had two I had a female and a male at western I had what you just said I had a community member I had a student and I had a dentist but U of T was just two staff members the year I was interviewed wait was it like dean Haas or just like to the normal dental professors or what two of the dental professors like one of mine for example was the um my anatomy teacher in first year she's a dentist of course she was actually a specialist and i had her as my interviewer so they oh, more than likely okay. would be two dentists that work okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. as a prof yeah and then for western it was the a group of people with like a student there and then professors and something like that yeah, so for Western, it was one upper year dental student, it was one community member, and then it was one dentist. Oh, that's pretty tough. Are you allowed to engage with the interviewers, like ask them questions back and forth, or is it strictly they give you a question and you answer, and we can't really get into a conversation or post questions back to them? Great question. So it depends on how the interviewers are. I was very fortunate. My everyone has a different experience. Like at UFT, my interviewers were more engaging and they like followed up or they shared their own experience and that made me feel so comfortable. Other yeah. people I know at UFT did not have that experience. It was very like answer question, answer question, answer question. And it didn't yeah. feel like a it could feel a bit hostile. Yeah. Exactly. My experience at Western was not pleasant. Um, but I still ended up getting accepted. Like, so don't let that oh, don't congrats that. Thank holy you, thank you don't let that what the hell? <laughs> thank you um but i also had a year to like make a lot of improvements so um it's not that impressive <laughs> but um, um at western i felt it was it was very much like that and it stressed me out because it was like they asked a question i answered and then the next person asked me the question and then i answered and a lot of the time they're trained not to smile not to give you feedback reassurance so it can be stressful but just in your hand remind yourself that they're doing this with everybody and it doesn't mean you're doing a bad job so just stay confident throughout mm -hmm. the process yeah okay because like a lot of my entries ended up being like the people like smile or do something right they're not just like sitting there but i heard that a couple yeah. of their interviews could be pretty hostile and pretty yeah and and nerving, so. exactly like at even uft when i started like they both had a very straight face like it was it was stressful it makes it harder on you but like don't get stressed by that they have to do that with everybody and maybe it was something i said that they that they were drawn to that they kind of opened up a little and like started having more of a conversation with me which put my mind at ease and was i was very fortunate Absolutely. for that yeah, yeah but that's not always the experience and just don't be discouraged it does not mean you're doing a bad job mm -hmm. yeah all right that's good. Thank you so much. That was pretty insightful. Thank no you. worries. I'm glad. Yeah. And also with the interviews, you want to be as confident in about yourself as you can. So you want to be absolutely prepared. Um, you want to be practicing. You want to show that you have confidence so you don't buckle down uh, during the interview. So that's another thing. So make sure you're prepared for it. Yeah, the more you prepare, the more confident you'll be. I was even still so nervous. And I, I feel like they're also very understanding if you are nervous. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll judge you for that. They realize that like, if you really it, care yeah. about something, it, it just comes like you get that pressure, especially when you really want something. 
but yeah, definitely be prepared. Like that is key. I feel like I would have probably blanked if I wasn't prepared because I'm just an anxious person by nature and everyone's different. Some people need more preparation than others. What I found really helpful, preparing with family members and then preparing with people you don't know. Um, yeah, but if you have any questions, like you can always DM me. I'm sure pre-dental association as well can answer anybody's questions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, reach out to people for help. It's not something you have to do on your own. Hussein's asking, where did you go for your undergrad? I went to York University. Um, I chose York because distance wise, I didn't want to be far from home. I didn't want to have to live off campus. Um, yeah, I don't think your undergrad really matters that much um, because York doesn't have the best reputation, as you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, I still made it to where I needed to go. So the, the under, where you go to undergrad doesn't really matter. Yeah. Abdullah, yeah, but York's GPA, yeah, York's GPA is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah good. it does help. <laughs> For sure. Go to York. <laughs> okay, that's all the questions. We can um, finish up if there's no further questions. Uh, the volunteer form is there. For all the volunteers, make sure you fill that out. So yeah, thank you all for coming. Thank you so much, Brianna, for preparing this presentation for us. It was very, very useful. I'm sure everyone uh, appreciated the information. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Good luck to everybody. Yeah, good luck to everybody. Um, I wanted to touch up on one thing that Ethnan said about trying to find a shadower. Uh, that's like a really scary step in your application if you don't have one already. All I'm saying is the more you try, the closer you'll get. Um, I remember when I was trying to find mine, in one day I went to like 14 clinics and they all said no to my face and it was super discouraging, but that whole week you just have to be determined and un you have to know that someone out there will say yes to you, so you just got to keep trying. It's all about persistence, I totally agree. Yes, thank you so much, thank you so much guys, I know, yeah, because I was, because uh, I just graduated as well and i was like come on i need to find experience <laughs> yeah trust me trust me it is a struggle but we'll yeah. get through it uh-huh and, and and you know just to talk about the, the whole gpa thing because i went to u of t as well and u of t gpa is kind of like opposite of the york gpa i heard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's why i asked maybe you know they, they have like a lower cutoff for you know u of t students or something like that uh no i don't think so eh? yeah <laughs> Yeah, okay. it's just how basically your your GPA is converted because the York has a different scale. It's like a nine point scale. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's but there's no cutoff. And I know people who went to UFT as their undergrad. A lot of them did their masters, and that really helped. Got it. Got if it. that's something you're willing to do, and I also heard that if you have your masters, you can get into teaching after, like you become a dentist. And that's something I didn't know. So I wish I knew that because I would consider going into teaching and I wouldn't want to have to go back after dental school to do a master's. So something to think about. Thank you. Thank you for the insight. No worries. I think this may be our final question. Maria, as someone from the US, do you think I could look into virtual shadowing slash volunteering for pre-dental association? Is not on the IG? Uh, yes, you can absolutely do virtual shadowing. We have it available. I'm not fully sure how it works. We have a shadowing committee though. So it's fully set up check the Instagram. We post about it when it's available. Um, in particular, if you want to be active about it, DM the page and ask them, uh, tell them about your situation, how you're in the US, and how you can get more involved. And we can definitely help you out. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Abdul is having some, um, he dropped pre, prehealthshadowing.com. You can check that out too. Okay, everyone, I think we can wrap it up. Again, thank you all for coming. Greatly appreciate you all. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone.